We did it. Hello. In theory, in theory, <laughs> we're all waiting for the ad to end because we know that there's an ad at the beginning of the video. <laughs> we got some jokers in the chat, in the comments. I love it. Anyways, um, let me do that. Ba, ba, ba. Is this part two? Yes, it is part two. Give me just a second. I'm going to post this in the Discord just in case anyone needs it. I really need to, I keep saying this and someday I will stop saying it because I will have done it, but I really need to get a little intro thingy like Brianna and Jess have. Yeah, I do too. Just so that we don't have, we can instead dance behind the camera and we don't have this weird little, uh, have to wait for everybody to join us. But hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to the second part. It's been so long since I've seen you. Right. Hello, Kay Beth. Welcome. Welcome. Feels like I haven't seen you. No, it's been so long. Fancy meeting you here too, Laura. Wild that we would be here. <laughs> British humor at its finest can always rely on us being jokers. Listen, <laughs> I know people say they don't get British humor. And oh, I, I just do. I just think that means that they don't, you know watch enough british tv because it is very easy to get british humor in my opinion if you have an open mind mm -hmm. it's i love it i love it um hello hello from some people hello sadia welcome welcome um hello aha this is where part two begins mr popper's ping penguins was the decision by the way beautiful um <laughs> it's not that people don't get British humor. People just don't get sarcasm. I am fluent in sarcasm. I feel like that. Um, I'm not sure what part of my DNA meant that I was a very sarcastic person, but I am a little bit of a sarcastic person. Maybe, maybe it was the, the upbringing that forced me to be slightly passive aggressive because I could never communicate, was never taught how to communicate my needs and wants in a correct manner or a effective manner. It's possible. Uh, hence why you get on with British humor. Exactly. Exactly. Some of it might go over my head, but. Yeah, it's just the sarcasm. I love it. Um, what is everyone, because I have the memory of a goldfish. What is everyone reading? What, what's what's going on with, with everyone else? What y'all are reading? I know you are currently reading or you're going to be reading Coming Home. Correct, Neva? Or I don't know if you'll be reading that on this sprint, because I know you've got to leave in about 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm, pro I'm probably going to at least, yeah. So if I don't start reading on this sprint, then I'll start reading it when I go over to Yours. mine. Yeah. Um, but I do need to finish coming home. Like, mm -hmm. I only have like an hour of it left. So like, I just need to finish it so I can count for 30 and 30. Yeah. <laughs> just send us an update in the chat and we'll see. Like, uh, I've reached the point where I'm like, come on, man. You only have an hour left. And then I do have a few more that are short. Do you need help making choices while we still have you? So I have What the Hex, which is two hours and 45 minutes, which means it'll be, like, half that. Because I most of these mm -hmm. I just do at one time speed. And then they just get, like, gradually longer after that. Like, I have The Breakup Artist. Mm -hmm. Spark and call me maybe that are all just under six hours. Oh, nice. Speaking so of. You're all just read them in the order that they're the shortest. And then, yeah. and then if I find other short books, like if I'm just like, if I'm just using my Audible premium to like find books that are already part of my subscription. Uh, yeah. Um. Then if I find more like short books, that are like only a couple of hours and I'll just do those. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I, that reminds me, need to borrow yellow face so I can read it. <laughs> Cause that's on my TBR for this year or for this month. And it is, if I remember correctly, it's a short, yeah, it's eight hours and 39 minutes. So it's a very short book. 
be fantastic for me to listen to that one. Um, currently, what I'm working on, for those of us that are new, The Message by K.A. Applegate. It's the fourth Animorphs book. Um, and then Yellow Face. Or nope, sorry. I'm, I'm going to be reading that at some point, but I'm also currently working on as my audiobook, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones which I am liking right now. Like, I understand why it's not for everyone. Yeah. Um, but I, like, I think that a lot of, I don't know, I, I said this on Ethos Friends, I know that at the beginning, a lot of the um, the reviewers that got it at the, when it was first released were all white reviewers. And so they were giving it, like, crappy reviews for, like, the dumbest reasons. It's like, you just didn't sit down and think about this story at all, did you? Like you didn't think about what the author was trying to do here at all, did you? So, um, let's see. Sarcasm and deadpan is for sure a requirement for British humor. 90% of British humor is either sarcasm or full-on insulting you to your face. I'm, yep, yep, I got that. I have seen that. Um, Renee says, nope, work with me here. Continuing my book, uh, Nin Diary. Also going to watch a quiz show, 16-year-olds competing on who is smartest, which is a Norwegian quiz show. Nice, nice. Laura says, finish. So I'm assuming, is this similar to um, who wants to be a millionaire? Or is this closer to like, are you smarter than a fifth grader type quiz show? Or is it Jeopardy? Like, what kind of quiz show are we working with here? Yeah. So, um Finishing The Queen of the Tearling, and then I have a secret book I would like to finish for a video today, and finish Not If for Smetella. Probably unrealistic kid to get all of that done at 7 p.m. I mean, you could probably get something done. I feel like at least one of those is doable by the end of, by 7 p.m. for you. So, um, I don't know how late you normally stay up. I know for me, 7 p.m. is sometimes is just is me just getting started right like i i wish it wasn't because my brain and body have been lately been like no it's 10 or 11 p.m we're tired let's go to bed but like my brain doesn't want to start working until five six seven o'clock so i don't know what's going on there um Sadia says, I am going to be reading A Prayer for the Crown Shy and then continuing Rebecca. May also read We Are Okay by Nina LaCour as it's a Libby book that goes back soon. Do it. Read it. Do it. <laughs> hey, Rye. Welcome, welcome. What are you up to this afternoon? Um, a trio from a class competes against trios from around the countries. The question varies. Lots of different. Oh, okay, so it sounds almost like if Jeopardy and Family Feud had a baby, but it was kids with, at school, right? That sounds fun. I I would not understand a single word of it. I'm sure, but it sounds like fun. That's always. I think those quiz shows or those kinds of shows where you're working with a team. I think half the fun of those is like not even what they're doing. It's the team. You know, right? It's watching the team interact with each other. I think. Yeah, and you're like Family Feud, like, yeah, the answers can be really funny sometimes, and Steve Harvey does a good job of, like, hosting the show, but the real fun is watching everyone get excited when they get something right. Oh, no! Rice says, I have COVID, so laying down, but we'll be reading a... Oh, your phone did the thing. Okay, a kingdom... Uh, a kingdom this cursed and empty... Very nice. Your phone does the thing that mine does where like you go to type something and it decides to send. The number of times I've had a comment send halfway through. Mine does that too. I'm like, I understand that that was close to the send button, but it wasn't. What is wrong with you? Um, Renee says the game show is very fun. Very nice. Last year, a tier team from my childhood city won. Oh, well, that's exciting. That's always fun to have your home team represented and have them do well. And not have them do so poorly that you're like, no, we don't know you. So, uh, let's see. Okay, Renee says, is, is sorry for Rye feeling bad. That's, that's just, being sick on the weekend is the worst. 
Like I know for a lot of us, that's kind of when our body is finally like, nope, bye. Um, but also it sucks. I used to end up with a lot of that where like I would make it through the end of the week and then the cold would come. I'm like, I know there's a cold coming. I know there's a cold coming and then my body would be like, okay, we can relax now, which means we're going to be sick as a dog. So, well, I hope that you are feeling better and are getting lots of rest dry um, because being sick is no fun. That is not... Oh, I need to reset this thing. Okay, so I am going to set the timer for a 45-minute sprint. But before we go, because I know you're going to have to pop off during this sprint probably. Yeah. Um, Because Neva has sprints at three. She is. We only get her for a short time. Um, hold on. Let me pop this up and then remove it. And then is there, before we lose yet, is there anything that you would like to plug for your channel real quick? Anything you want to let us know is coming up or something that came out recently that you're like, please go pay some attention to this. <laughs> um, I will have sprints like always throughout the week. Um, and then. Entire week forever. Take an abra. And then. Uh, Patreon. For Patreon people. Um. For the whole month of April, we'll like I'll post links and stuff in the Patreon, but we're gonna be hanging out with Katie for most mm -hmm. of the month. Um, just because I my motivation levels are zero. So that's where we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At some point, thank you. At some point there will be videos coming out, but I can't tell you when those are because I I don't feasibly know. I do know that there will be an announcement video for something happening in May. I'm not telling you right now because you're taking a nap. Good night. Um, that will be, there will be an announcement video on my channel and Nicole's channel on Monday. Yeah, mm -hmm. Monday at 4 p.m. for American people. I think that's like 7 a.m. on Tuesday for her. Okay. She's in the future, right? Okay. And then um we'll be, on, we'll be on Brittany's channel on Tuesday. Okay. For the pizza party. Oh, yeah, we will be. <laughs> I keep forgetting I don't oh, have Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, yeah, sure. And I was like, you'll be there too. You too, right? <laughs> um we are. We get it from I'm so used to Tuesday not being an option until it is. Right, yeah. So we'll be, on, we'll be on Britney's channel for a cult miss pizza party on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like there was something else that I'm supposed to be announcing, but I don't. Oh, and then on the 20th, the 20th so 420, okay. um, there will be a collab video. But I'm not going to tell you who's in the collab video. Just know that there, Can I I'll be posting one. <laughs> so you've got quite a few things coming up. There we go. Yeah, um, but actual videos that are just my videos, who knows when they, those will come. I can't tell you when they will be, but I can just tell you eventually. Okay, nice, nice. And then I do have, hold on, I do have you linked down below in the description box if anybody wants to go check out your channel, check the vibes, see if you want to subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, So that sounds cool. Yeah, Tuesday, I have to remember to go get pizza dough and cheese. <laughs> So um, I'll text you and remind you because I actually took Tuesday off the, for the pizza party. Oh, oh see, I do believe that I'm I have I'm gonna go out on Monday probably or tomorrow, one of those two days. Because Tuesdays I no wait I do sprints on Wednesdays right now. That's right. <laughs> we move sprints to Wednesdays for a little bit just to see how that works out for us. Which I need to schedule those. But anyways. I think I heard my name, but I'm not sure. So we're going to go to a sprint and I'm going to see what's going on there. Um, we will see you when we see you. Uh, also go check out Neva's channel because she's also doing sprints in like four minutes. But let's head up to the next sprint. It's going to be three, two, one. Let's go.
Um, hi, welcome back, guys. Oof. I may have gotten slightly distracted. That's great. But I did read some. I also put Taylor Swift on, and like there are a couple of songs. I'm listening to folklore, and there are a couple of songs on folklore that like I just gotta stop and sing. One of which being um, Exile. Like you just gotta stop and sing that one. So, anyways, hi, I'm totally normal. And how did y'all do? <laughs> um, yeah, that was 14 pages that I read. I'm hopefully gonna buckle down in this next sprint and actually get this done. I also, because I'm always trying to come up with like, okay, what or remember what series were we not allowed to read when we were kids? Like, what series did I know my mother disapproved of? Um, and like, somehow my brain got on to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Does anyone, do I have any 90s kids in the house? Oh yeah, I was thinking about the Animorphs TV show. Got on to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and like, I was like, oh man, too bad this is a TV show. Too bad there aren't books. I was like, but what if there are books? Um, so I'm going to have to go look and see if there are Power Rangers books. So I can watch the TV show and make it content for this, you know, and, and do do one of these videos that's a Power Rangers video, right? Um, I think that would be really fun and cool, guys, don't you? 90s kid nostalgia. Uh, anyways, 14 pages. I haven't gotten too much into what's going on in this book. Like the way that these are, because they're so short, the way they're structured is quite a bit of the book is the setup and then gathering information for what they need to do. And then there's an event that happens and then the end of the book. Um, so these are not, I don't think like, they're fine. They're like three stars. They're books that exist and I've read them. Um, so there is that, but they aren't, uh, what was I going to say? Like they aren't like huge spanning works of literary fiction. They're just, they're fine. Um, hello, we have, oh no, the book just made a Bush reference. It takes place in 2003, not historical, but very different than 2000, 2024. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. That's very, you can always tell like contemporaries from historical fiction too, because like a historical fiction set in the 90s is going to more likely explain a few things that the contemporary audience may not understand, whereas a like a 90s contemporary would not explain those things as much and the fact that the 90s can be considered historical fiction is honestly a crime i think like the 70s should can count as historical i feel like that makes sense to count as historical but not like that anything after that nope <laughs> uh faith says i'm doing writing sprints i need the timer i have adhd so no sense of time passing by hi everyone hey faith yes sprints are beautiful for uh when you are writing because otherwise like i don't know what it is about sprints when i'm writing but i'm always able to write more unless i'm in a mood unless i'm in a like a, i have to get this down but like if i'm just sitting down to write and i time myself i write more because there is a deadline i'm able to focus for for that short mid, bit of time um when i know that there is an end to, to it if that makes sense I think that's one of the reasons why they'll say like just sit down and write for five minutes or do whatever it is you're doing for five minutes because then you can stop at five minutes but once you started typically you're gonna continue got a few highs here hello carissa welcome welcome uh carissa says i will be doing some cleaning jess is home from nope don't come back here jess is home from work yay Yes, uh, so, I, but we weren't, I don't know why we weren't allowed to watch it. I don't even remember what my mom's reasoning for it was for, like, not letting us, maybe because there was, like, witchcraft or something in it, but, like, they were the bad guys. I know we watched plenty of stuff which had witches as the bad guys. So I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Um... <laughs> Renee said, read a little bit, mostly watch the quiz. These teens have all read Percy Jackson. Good for them. I mean, that would make sense because Percy Jackson would have been like a big middle grade thing if they're like 16. 
and Percy Jackson is so like it's it's de- waned a little in popularity, but it's still popular. Like it's not you know who levels of popular, unfortunately, because it deserves to be. But um, but it, it is a pretty popular middle grade series, so kids are still reading it, and they were still making books as early as or as late as 2014 for that series, and that's not even considering the Trials of Apollo. So that makes sense that they would have read that. It probably is assigned in school. Ooh, had lasagna. That sounds delicious. I, I look like I'm, I look so short sitting like this. Let me sit up a little bit more. Um, oh, yes. 90s are an awesome time to be a kid. Best cartoons, no social media for the dumb shit we did. Oh, man. Yep. Yep. I was, I, there wasn't, I, I wasn't allowed, well, there was some stuff because I wasn't allowed to have a MySpace. Um, and I never really got into that. I know I had a forum. I had a Lord of the Rings forum for a little bit. Cannot remember the name of that stupid thing for the life of me because I keep wanting to see if I can find it again. Um, probably don't want to find it, but I keep trying to see if I can. So, uh, Sadia said, started cleaning my room in that sprint. Very nice. I feel historical means very different clothes, which to me is 70s at the latest. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, I know that, like, there definitely have been historical events that have happened um, in the last multiple decades, obviously. It's just, I don't, something about, like, the 70s and before feels like history. And then, like, the 80s and beyond feels like current events. And I think part of that is because we still can very much like part of that is because we lived through it. And part of it, I think, is probably because we can still very much trace things back to those. And we're still dealing with the aftermath um, of especially like the 80s and 90s. Rachel says, I actually write less during sprints. So I usually put everyone on mute to give watch time while I write. <laughs> I used to do. I don't know. Right. OK, so have you done. um because the thing that got me started doing sprints was actually write-ins. Uh, back in 2018, I think, I started doing virtual write-ins um, because I would do write-ins for NaNoWriMo every year. And that's where I learned how to do sprints. And I learned about the Pomodoro method, um, even though I don't think we called it the Pomodoro method. I think it was just like, hey, we're going to write for 45 minutes, see how much you can do. I used to be able to write a thousand words in 45 minutes. I miss those days. Um, Anyways, but like, I do have times where I'll just like, I do get more reading done on my own, if I can focus. The question is, can I focus? Will I sit down to do the reading? That is the big question. Will I sit down to do the writing? Um, which I used to be really good at doing. I used to be really good at like stopping by Starbucks. Um, that used to be what I would do is I would go to Starbucks and I'd get my special orange drink. And I would sit and I would write for an hour or two. Um, or I'd stop at Panera. Obviously, Starbucks is not an option right now because I've been boycotting them since 2018. Uh, so they are to be avoided at all costs. Have heard someone say 1980s. Technically, I think it is because it's like 50 years ago. But I was born in the 80s. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe you and a brother, your brother went too heavy on ninja moves and broke her coffee table or something. And then she banned it. That didn't. I know that didn't happen. I know that did, for a fact that that didn't happen because we were not allowed to watch it at home. Uh, and we did not break any coffee tables when I was a child. I do know that. We could watch it at friends' houses, though. There were quite a few things that, like, we could watch at a friend's house or, like, Anastasia. We weren't allowed to own because of Rasputin. But we could borrow it from our next-door neighbor and watch it with her. The logic there is questionable. And like we couldn't, I couldn't go over to the next door neighbor's house because both parents smoked. Um, and I was very asthmatic as a child. Uh, yeah, PGO is a modern classic. When I worked at a bookstore, we always, always, like Rick Riordan is always in stock and he is always busy. Um, Rope Crewman says, I finished four chapters of Mr. Popper's Penguins, but then I heard Paper Mario 64 calling my name and that would be rude if I didn't answer it. Now, what it, I mean, Probably. You don't want to leave Mario hanging. So we, and she wasn't even that fundy. Like she's more fundy now than she was then, you know, because she was very much like, hey, you need to get a degree and all of this stuff. 
And I feel like she maybe wouldn't have pushed me to do that now, potentially. Although, I mean, me getting a degree was very silly um, because it was the wrong degree. Brittany says, just getting the last bit of supper in the slow cooker. Hey there. Uh, I've never nanoed. I just kind of sit, get started, don't realize three hours pass, and I need water and food probably. I don't have that problem. I have the opposite of that problem, which is that I, I have that problem with like certain things, but not with writing because writing is like I have to get myself started and focused, and then I would my brain most of the time would rather do anything else but write. They can't. That's the thing. Like you could say, yes, watch whatever outside the house, but still, if they hadn't said anything, you could easily watch stuff. Yeah, exactly. So like we were, we, I know we watched Power Rangers at one of my friend's houses. Um, the thing that was weird to me was that like the, we were allowed to borrow Anastasia from the, from the, the neighbor kid and have her come over and watch it. But like, um, <laughs> Jess wants to know what you're making, Brittany. Um, yeah, so I just set alarms on my phone to remind me to eat and check my farm and stuff. I am the queen of going, okay, yeah, I'll get to that and putting it to the side. I wish I could say alarms worked and setting alarms worked, but I'm always in the middle of something. So I'm like, okay, cool. And then it's an hour later. That happened last night. That was fun. I don't like it. <laughs> That's why yesterday's video was going up to on Monday. Um, so anyways, shall we do another 45? Five. What just, why are you, what, what is happening? That was very odd. It did a weird thing there. Okay. Oh, hello, Gemstone Jasper. Spent the day cleaning so far. I have ADHD, so hyperfocus is a real danger. Set a timer for 90 minutes and forced break. But my, just finished up the kitchen, ended up being at least an extra 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, I'm so bad about it. like tasks. I will do anything to not have to do the task. But if it's something I want to do or scrolling on my phone, I guess after a lifetime of schooling and not realizing I have ADD, I just thought I was dumb. I had to train my brain to take various parts of the same task so I can stay focused on. And that works. It's just the, um, the alarms part that doesn't work for me because I ignore the alarms because they are self-imposed deadlines. And I am very bad at, um, not honoring self-imposed deadlines. I'm bit, like, I'm like, oh, but I'm the only one holding me accountable to this. So if I don't do this, it doesn't matter. So part one, we'll be thinking on plot, one on pace, one on setting dialogue, another reminding me about foreshadowing or subplot. Nice, nice. That's one way to do it. Um, I am, I have a system that I follow specifically. Um, I have, I don't know if you've ever, is it up there? There you can see it, the orange book way back there, the big, thick orange thing. It's called Book in a Month. And then I have Save the Cat, and I use those, or I used those to plot. I haven't written anything in the four years this November. So, anyways, the only rule we had, uh, no candy during the week. Other kids could have candy on a Wednesday. Oh, boy. Uh, we were allowed to have something sweet. Hard for my mom to find stuff that both I and my brother could eat, but you know what? And don't, did Brittany tell us? Oh, Brittany did tell us. Chicken, bacon, ranch, pasta. To be honest, parents are all, all parents are going to make decisions that make little to no sense in hindsight, regardless of religious worldview. Raising another human does not come with an instruction manual. No, it doesn't. But a lot of what my mom told us and did made sense from a certain point of logic. So, and I think it was just like, like very much like not wanting to put her beliefs on other people, which she understood at that point in time in her life. Um, to some extent, but she, um, I guess, you know, didn't want to say no to the neighbor kid who wanted to watch the movie with us. And like, it was fine. Like, again, bad guy. I don't understand. Cause like we were watching the lion, the witch in the wardrobe from a young age. Um, where did we go? Oh, okay. Just said, I didn't, I don't think I've ever had anything chicken making ranch. I'm a weird Midwesterner. <laughs> I have never had anything with ranch on it as well because it has, stuff in it I can't eat. Uh, Gemstone says, I didn't want to clean. I hate it, but I struggle with transitioning between cats. So once I start, it can be hard to stop. The starting and stopping are the hardest part for me. Um, for me, the staying on task is the hardest part because I'll start cleaning one thing 
and then there will be something that needs to go downstairs. And so I'll take it downstairs and I will see something else that needs to be done. And I'll be like, oh, I should do that really quick before I go back upstairs. And you get it. I think the easiest way that I found to like mitigate that now is to just put like, okay, this all needs to go downstairs and it's all going to be right here. So it's contained and not making things messy. But when I am done, this all goes downstairs. Uh, also, very little was known about ADHD in our day. My parents didn't have helpful internet articles. They just had traditional parenting books that were mostly unhelpful. They know and acknowledge that now, but they had no way of knowing back then. I wouldn't have been diagnosed back then. I haven't been diagnosed now. I don't know why I'm saying that like I'm diagnosed now, but I don't like, sometimes I wonder if I had not been homeschooled, if I would have been diagnosed by this point uh, as a child. But at the same time, very much my, it, I think if I were to be diagnosed, it would be inattentive type with a lot of daydreaming. Um, and so like people don't see that as, didn't see that as ADHD. They just saw that as being spacey. But like a lot of like even stuff that my mom would tell me, hey, you're bad at this, <laughs> not bad at this, but like this is something you need to work on, which like um, paying attention to small details. Not great. Not good at that. Uh, when it's like tests and things like that. And like she like a lot of the time you'd get stuff wrong because you weren't paying attention to what the actual question was. No, but they, nobody looks at that and thinks, um, you know, like nobody ever thinks like, oh, that could, that, that you're just not paying attention. Like they don't think about that being a symptom of ADHD most of the time. Uh, I don't think I've ever looked at those books, but when I get seated, but record, uh, but when I get seated, record is writing over 265,000 words in about four months, but I did schedule days off every two weeks to avoid burnout, which is important. Very important, as I now know. I mean, I don't think it was NaNoWriMo that actually broke my brain, but I think it was NaNoWriMo that was kind of the last straw that year. Um, so, like, I, the, yeah. Oh, yeah, I did. I used to sing a lot. Um, I don't anymore, but I can't, I am able to sing. I was, uh, I, I, what, not a musical theater major, but I went to school and tried to get into the music, musical theater program and was not let in, unfortunately. Um, and then I did sing in church and stuff. So no matter like no matter what, I need to leave the farm and the writing and do something zero percent related. Exactly. Exactly. That's important. Save the Cat is a great resource for both writers and readers. It helps us put names or tropes that we like, dislike in fiction. I never thought about that from the reader perspective. Like from the writer perspective, it's fantastic. Um, I didn't think about that from the reader perspective and like having those kinds of tropes. Oh man, I need it. Now I feel like I need to actually go through and read the whole book. That's amazing. Um, I have, uh, where is it? It's over there. I'm not going to go in. I also have Don Truby's Anatomy of Story, which I have friends that will swear a lot by that. Like it's the Bible. So I want to check that out um, when I get back into the whole writing. I'm trying to get back into the writing thing. The stories have started coming back. Uh, same, they didn't start including girls in ADHD studies until the 90s. I was diagnosed in adulthood, but my parents couldn't have been expected to know girls' ADHD signs. Yep. I come back here. I struggled to stay on task two. When I lived with my mom, my little sis would come into my room and chat while I cleaned. She knows that I would stand there for like five, 10 minutes, try and figure out the next step. Or I will start with one thing, end up at the bank or something somehow and never know. Or I'll focus over on one room so it will be spotless, but the rest is still a disaster. Yeah. I just... Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. I, I really like a very specific kind of trope, usually not found in Western fiction. Do you mean like Western as in like European fiction? Or do you mean like Western as in the genre Western? I don't think it has a name. Um, the genres in Save the Cat are not like genre genres. It's actually, well, I have it, hold on. Okay, so if I recall correctly, I actually started Save the Cat before this existed. Um, this is Save the Cat Writes a Novel, because it was originally a screenplay thing, but it can be adapted to novels. Oh, holy, I have so many tabs in here. Um, let's... Okay, and so, like, their, their genres have more to do with, like, what the plot is than it is, like, sci-fi, fantasy, blah, blah, blah. Like, because all of these can be fit under a genre, but, like, they have... Um, the 10 genres are on 79. Well, there they are. Uh, they have like Why Done It. Uh, there's Rites of Passage. 
institutionalized superhero dude with a problem, full triumphant, buddy love, out of the bottle, golden fleece, yes, um, and monster in the house are the genres here. And it's basically describing the type of plot that it is. Uh, and they also give examples of various, uh, what's the word, of various books in different genre, real genres that fit those. Like, hold on, where is Superhero is 144? Because they describe, okay, so the following, okay, so let's see. Yeah, not that one. We're not going to reference that woman. Do with a problem. We'll do dude with a problem. I swear to God, if that's another... Okay, there we go. So, like, for do with a problem, that genre, the books that they list are The Martian by Andy Weir, The Firm by John Grisham, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, and Misery by Stephen King. So, like, those are a vast array of genres, but... It's also like we're going genre plot wise, not genre um, book wise. I've lost a thread. I've done two nanos in a row, but I do zero writing outside of November emails and lesson plans notwithstanding. I've done, I think I've completed two nanos, not in a row, because I haven't always done a traditional nano. Um, the last one I tried was a traditional nano, and I did complete it. A lot of the time I just use Nano as kind of, or I used to use Nano as my like kickoff for my writing year. Like it would be January 1st of my writing year. And I would do a lot of editing, stuff like that. I hate cleaning as well, but it helps to have the radio. That's why I listen to so many audiobooks. Uh, it's the guy who's destined to be lonely, except the fate by either giving 115% into his duty or hoarding power to masters. And he changes when he meets a girl. <sighs> but that's such a good trope. I love that. I love that, you know? And it's usually that she's curious and intelligent and compassionate and capable in some way slash skill, and she can no, he can no longer accept it. This is starting to sound like wax. <laughs> this is starting to sound like wax from the second Mistborn trilogy, which I am such, like, I'm such a sucker for the character that is fully enmeshed in their what they're doing bones is another good example of that kind of trope fully enmeshed in what they are doing like completely focused no time for like a personal life or is scared of a personal life that's always fun when they're scared of the personal life and then i think of so many tv shows that fit that and then somebody comes in and is like hi no but you have feelings let's talk about your feelings let's make you feel things and they're mad that they're feeling things that makes it even better uh, I did something last night that I've never done before. Clean my desk in one sitting. I said the Pomodoro time will step back and realize that because I had been cleaning in little bits of it at a time. Nice. I will spend my money on that. Yes. Uh, usually uh, found in Xi'an show works and fantasy shoujo works. Yes, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Gemstone says I have chronic pain in my hand, so I've been taking it easy on writing, but my current whip is a YA angel demon sapphic romance where they fight to end the world between heaven and hell oh god good luck to them on that one god bless them <laughs> that that sounds like i mean like you talk about like the hunger games being too much for teenagers having to mend the schism between heaven and hell sounds like way more than any human should have to do let alone anyone who was a teenager but it is that's ambition i hope they do it i hope they manage it or at least i hope they're able to find their own little place in the world um there was little i needed to do outside of throwing away papers i no longer need and put pins back in their holders sometimes the adhd superpower can clean rooms sometimes it can um also i like my desk is new so i really need to like get some of the stuff that i need um Oh, but it doesn't have a name. I need a name. I feel like, I mean, I can think of, hmm. Because it's not Grumpy Sunshine, but Grumpy Sunshine could fall under that kind of genre. Um... It's almost like opposites attract. Or, like, I mean, a lot of it you could do, like, it's head meets heart. 
which is another favorite trope of mine. We love that. Anyways, we're not going to get into why I love that as a phrase slash trope because that hurts too much. Anyways, uh, I play my workout music while feeling very nice. I play whatever I am feeling like and need. No, oops, come back here. No longer solitary would work with that work. Yeah. Grum slash sunshine could fall, but it's not that. Yeah. I don't know if it's opposite of track or head plus heart. Yeah. It's like, I feel like that dynamic could be used over a variety of genres and tropes. If that makes sense. Like there are a bunch of tropes that could be under that one umbrella, but it doesn't have a name. Now I'm going to be awake at night thinking about this. Uh, Myla Angel is training for Celestial Army under Michael. God chose her to play a special role that puts all kinds of pressure on her. She's a golden child. Who served. So she, she, this is giving a uh, eldest daughter in an evangelical household army, uh, not army, uh, vibes. Because <laughs> there's only two ways we go. There truly is only two ways we go. Um, flashbacks, flashbacks. Because I, I'm, I could, if you took out the angel part could just be a sermon that they teach in kids' church and youth ministry. Um, let's see. Okay, that is the end of the comments. So let us pull this up. Beautiful. And let's go in three, two, one. See you in 45.
I don't know why I was surprised by that. I literally came over here because it was about to go off. And still, I'm like, dang, what? I'm a normal person, I swear. Okay, hold on. We made it to page 74, which means we read 42 pages that time. So I'm almost, here, I'll put a bookmark in. I'm about halfway. I'm a little over halfway. Yeah, well, according to this, I'm not halfway yet, but like, this is the, this is as much as I have left. Like, I have almost as much, I have less left, it looks like, than I, well, no, because 150, 174 would be 148. So yeah, I'm a little bit, a little bit shy of halfway. Okay, fine, I can, math wins. <laughs> Normal is subjective. Hello, Max. How are you? Uh, very nice. Oh, sorry. Jim Stone is telling us more about their book. Bethany, uh, adopted by Lucifer. She loves Earth and humanity, but has never been allowed to go after a horrible fight with Lucifer. She runs away to Earth and meets Marla. Ooh. It sounds like How to Lose a Time War, but with angels and demons. I love it. Christina says, hi, beautiful people. Found the second stream. <laughs> Reading stuff and doing stuff and hugging the like button. I have Appreciate you. Um, gonna leave me up on the TV. Need to restart my laptop and update for a bit. I think mine has been bugging me to do an update, and I'm just like, but I don't wanna. I don't wanna. It doesn't sound like a good idea to me. Thank you. No. So um, there is that. Um, let's see. How did everyone else do in that sprint? Not quite as. I didn't do quite as well as I would have liked, but I, I still, that's not a bad amount to have gotten done. If I can, maybe I'll be able to get the rest of it done in the next sprint, potentially. That's a possibility there um, for all of that jazz. I'm like, like, it's very, I'm going to be, I think when I go to make dinner instead of listening to my book, I should listen to my book, but I think when I go to make dinner instead of listening to my book, I'm going to watch some of the show so I can report back on the vlog about how the show is. <laughs> um, we'll see about that. I'm getting a little hungry. I feel like maybe a snack. Like I don't want to eat dinner yet because if I eat dinner, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I eat dinner too early, I am hungry again. Like, at a time that is inconvenient for me to eat anything. Because if I don't, if I eat too close to when I go to bed, I get heartburn when I am asleep. It's not fun. But if I eat too late, again, heartburn. So, anyways, um, yes, tea always makes me feel better. I read chapter one of One Dark Window, switched my laundry, and order groceries. Gonna get back to cleaning here in a moment. Um, Yes, yes. I should probably put the audiobook on and clean. I think that's what I'm going to do once I have finished this, but I wanted to finish this um, and get at least one more book in my little Animorphs read along going. So, do I have thoughts about this book? Like, I don't know that I have thoughts. What are thoughts? I don't know what thoughts are. How? What are them, bum, bum. Do we have anything else people want to report? Anything else that we're doing? I think for, um, I want to, I want to do an hour long sprint. So I have time to get a snack and get some decent reading done for the next sprint. Do you guys think that's a good idea? I think an hour long sprint. Uh, I've been here, just not real. I didn't, oh no, I didn't sleep well last night for some reason. So I and my brain are non-functional today. At least you have an excuse for when your brain is non-functional. I don't always have that excuse. Shit, I need to go pick up my medications from the pharmacy. I'm gonna, that's happening tomorrow. That's happening tomorrow. I also need to pay for my uh, health insurance because I just remember I haven't done that yet. Or paid for my car insurance. Jesus Christ. Fucking bills. <coughs> I hate doing them auto pay because like I want to have control of when they hit. Um, but then I forget before April 10th. Nope, that's not what I want. I want view. That's my upcoming bill. Just 
take care of that. Anyways, okay, that's cool. That's done. And I will screenshot that. Just, sorry, random moment to take care of an admin thing because if I didn't take care of it, I wasn't going to do it. So, anyways, how did everyone else do? I think I've already, I've already asked that. Never mind. Okay, let's pull this up. Let's go ahead and do another trick because I don't really have that much to talk about today or at this moment. So, we'll do that. I'm going to get a snack. I don't know what I'm going to do for a snack. What should I do for a snack, guys? I don't know. You guys don't know what food I have in my house. I don't know what food I have in my house. I'm going to do hummus and pretzels. I could do that. I really like like that. You could do ramen. I feel like that would be good. <laughs> Allergies are really kicking my butt the last week or so. So much worse than last year. Ragweed season is always the worst, but that doesn't start till like July. I'm scared now. Oh, God. Yeah, I... Oh, allergies are the worst. I hate them. Especially, like, as annoying and difficult to deal with as my food allergies have been and my eczema has been, nothing is worse than my sinus allergies. Nothing, like, derails my life more than when I'm having a really bad flare-up of my sinus allergies. And I can't predict her. I don't understand why she does what she does when she does what she does. None of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. Like, I'll be like, where's the pollen? The pollen was gone three weeks ago. Why are you doing this? Anyways, let's pull this up. Let's go here. And I will see you on three, two, one. Let's go.
Oh, nope, I don't want to remove me. I want to remove that. Hello, welcome back, everyone. How are we doing? How are we doing? I did not make it as far as I could have because I was trying to get Taylor Swift merch for a friend. Um, anyways. <laughs> Let me... Got it, got it. Okay. That was 22 pages that time. I'm almost done. We're, we're getting into like the big thing that they're going to do, which these kids, these kids, wild, wild. Anyways, we're getting into this thing that they're, the thing that they, the like big thing they're going to do in this particular book. And then I think we'll be done. So anyways, how did everyone else do sound off in the comments? Let me know. No, oh, I got the hiccups somehow. Let's see. Love that we've had to personalize our bodily parts and bodily functions slash chronic conditions as if they are separate and distinct from ourselves. At least it makes it fun. Listen. It's much easier to conceptualize the idea that something is not necessarily your fault when you can think of it as something separate from who you are or what you are or not what yeah who you are so like being able to say okay well like yeah I, I don't know how like not saying that doesn't absolve you of responsibility in some cases for you know not being a trash human being um but that it, it makes it easier to be able to go yeah this thing is a thing that affects me but it is not me Let's see. Jamie says, I'm back from work and finished checking out all my scheduled posts for duty. So far, so good. Listening to I is Another by John Fossey. Very nice. Carissa says, I just got back from running some errands. Sorry, making some dinner and hopefully get to read a little bit. Yay. Did you tell us what you were reading? Hold on. Let me go back up to where you joined us. It wasn't too terribly long ago, I don't think. Let's see. Okay, yeah, you just said you were doing cleaning. What are you planning on reading, Carissa? What do you think what do you think it's gonna be today? Hello, Claire. How are you? What are you up to today? What what you got going on? Um I wanna finish this book. <laughs> I wanna finish this book and then I wanna go for my little walk and then I wanna make myself some little dinner. Um and that's Oh, God bless. Uh, Chris, it says, I will be reading Words of Radiance. Radiance? Words of Radiance. Um, I say this is someone who enjoyed Way of Kings. God bless you. Godspeed. <laughs> Those books are so good, but they are such, like, I, I, they feel like a marriage. <laughs> when you pick them up, there's such a commitment. Um, I definitely am not a, a, a everyday Brandon Sanderson girly anymore. I used to be. I used to be. My brother made me listen to this book the other day because, I mean, I was trapped in a car with him for 24 hours. Um, not of straight, of like a full 24 hours, but like when I went to see him, we ended up driving to where he used to live and then driving back and yada, yada, yada. Um, and he made me listen to this book called Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. And it makes me concerned about the fact that I have another Adrian Tchaikovsky on my shelf. Or on my un unread shelf because like one of the plots I was like okay this is interesting I'm okay I'm here and then another of the plots I was like this is nope there's I don't I don't care I don't care about this I get it I don't care about this um, if you've read it it's the spider plot and then <laughs> like I get what Adrian was doing but I I, I do. and then the ending took so long so long. So very, very, like, it just kept dragging on. And I was like, can we just, like, we don't, uh, no, please make it stop. So, like, because I could see the p potential solution. And I was like, why are we doing all of this? Why are we doing all of this? Make it, please, let someone have sense. Um, Chris says, I did also buy a small thing for me while I was out. It's the Wubbles Crochet book. Nice, nice. Chris says, I am good. I'm doing Dewey's 24-hour readathon, and I'm currently reading Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth. 
why have I, I feel like that sounds familiar. Nope, that's not how you spell shit. There we go. I, I know I've heard of this author before. I don't think, okay. Interesting. Okay, it's a, okay. I think I'm like snagging on the author's name because I know she's read some books that I've seen before. Uh, Claire says I'm 96 pages into to Darling Girls. Mistborn is by far my favorite. Nice. I have very complicated feelings about that series because it is so well written. And also, Brandon Sanderson did violence upon my emotions. Um. <laughs> still bitter about a couple of things that happened but also it was so well well done like you can't like you can't and then Mistborn Era 2 I think is my second favorite of what I have read from Brandon Sanderson so far the jury is still out because he could still do things in that series that make me mad but at least I'm now prepared for them I'm pretty sure Wax is not getting out of that final book alive like I literally, when I was, this was years ago, was texting. I was like, oh, this just happened. Yeah, Wax is probably going to die. This just happened. Yeah, he's probably going to die. <laughs> I won't tell you what it is, but I just, I have predicted this man will die multiple times reading all three of the books in Era 2. Oh my God, Era 2 is so much fun. It's like a little bit steampunk. Um, and I think that it gets a little bit less, like, because he knows you know the magic system, it got a little bit less repetitive in how he he um, described it. Because I think that's the only issue I have with book one is sometimes when he's describing how they would use the metals and stuff, it got a bit rep repetitive um, with how, like, how, and he's got gotten better at describing it. So, and but it's so much, like, I love it so much. It's almost like a, a buddy, not buddy cop. But like, it's definitely like a, um, a straight man and an interlocutor kind of plot, uh, or a straight man and a goofball kind of plot like that. Um, and when I say straight here, I don't mean sexuality. It's a narrative thing that you see in plays. Um, and it's just, it's so funny. I love it. The humor is just God tier. God tier. I love it so much. And I'm very scared. And I still haven't picked up the last book because I'm very scared. Anyways, I'm normal. Anyway, my favorite series so far, or like that I've read of his, um, is the Reckoner series, which I know is a controversial take because that first book is a little, a little teenage boy. Very teenage boy. Um, but also. I enjoyed it so much because I'm a superhero girly. And that's what the tropes are for that. Uh, we have a Steph. Hey, Steph. I'm currently reading Sounds of Fake, but okay. That's funny. That's very, what is happening here? That is very, very funny. Um, Rope Crewman says, I'm now 75% in Mr. Popper's Penguins. I read four pages of American Phonetic Studies. And finish the prologue to Paper Mario 64. Very nice. Very nice. And we have an info back. It's like 11.30 p.m. where you are. I am back home and organizing the socks I bought. You bought socks? <laughs> what kind of socks? I have way too many socks for someone who lives in Florida and doesn't really wear them most of the year. So, uh, got 33 pages of roomies and will continue later. Are you liking it so far? Um, are you allowed to tell me if you're liking it so far? That's a good question. Are you allowed to tell me if you like it? Hmm. 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 Anyways, I think I need to finish this book before the light goes. Or, like, we still have hours and hours of light, but, like, there are... Actually, no. I should probably wait for the sun to go down just a touch before I um get, what is the word? Before I film over there because it's going to be very, very orangey right now. Ah. 
<laughs> I am allowed to tell you, and so far it's a book. Uh oh. Oh no. Poor Aoife. Poor Aoife. Okay, okay. I get that. I get that. Sometimes that's what happens. Okay. Let me, does anyone else have any other updates they want to come in? I'm going to go and reset the timer really quickly. So if there's anything else you want, let me know. Um, oh, come on. I don't know how that, where did that on come from? I, that's not an accent that I have ever had in my life. Okay. Um, oh, I can close the D and I can close Owlbear. I don't need that right now. <laughs> I love it. Eva's like, media does not have to be amazing to be consumed. Hello, Julie. Just come from work and this day smashed me. So I'm starting dinner. Hello. We have a friend. Hello. You're muted. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to be in a sprint because I didn't have yeah. your sprint pulled up. I know. I know. So I was like, I'll just mute myself. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Good. Did you, Brianna, did you change your hair color? I did. It did. It looks very good. Thank you. I mean, the other one looks good too, but that looks very cute. It's like, it's an experiment because the thing is, is that when we put red in my hair, it's like, oh, we love red. And then it goes like fire engine. So we went completely the other direction so that that way next time we can get back to the brown red we want <laughs> okay i see i understand i we I did see. like ashy brown this time so that yeah. in two months i can put back the red <laughs> just a yes, little bit <laughs> yes, yes. as someone who, who who has been there and done that um last yeah. time it took like four hours because we put the first one on and it was literally just like just a little bit of red and it turned out orange and i was like what happened? <laughs> yeah, no, I um apparently mine tends toward brown if it's gonna go, but I'm mm -hmm. used to, like used to my hair being a little bit day glow orange red mm -hmm. for the first few days, but then it fades and it tends yeah. to yeah. There's like there's still mine. a red undertone in it, and yeah. like we literally put ash brown in it, and it still has a red undertone in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know what? Sometimes you gotta do some weird stuff to balance stuff out, right? This is what happens when when you were in college and your roommate was a cosmetology student, and you let them experiment on your hair, and now it's just it just does red. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hard. Yeah, because it takes so long for new growth to come in, and the new growth is the stuff you can you can mess with. Yeah, the most. And the rest of it gets very angry. Yep. <laughs> Oh, so, um, so we have brown hair now. So my vlog next week is going to have a little bit of continuity issues. I, I, it, it, can I say thank you? Thank you. Yeah, you, just, you just come on. Well, we just got the hair done. Look at that. Exactly. New I just have I it'll just be the intro because I always film the intros at the end. Yeah. So that'll be the only thing. So, hey, this is just me with different hair. If I mess with the lights enough, you won't be able to tell. Oh, nice. Okay. That's or at that's least it'll like it'll look kind of like, hmm, did she do something with her hair? But then it like will be just subtle. Enough. I mean, you could always do like you just sometimes um there are no, multiple just... multiple vlogs where I have pulled my hair back so you cannot see that the length is changed. <laughs> yeah. Lexi did that one time with one of her sprints or one of her vlogs that she had she like lost a clip, but she had cut her hair. So she like put it, she like put a hoodie on and like put it under her so that you couldn't actually tell that it was much shorter. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, I think I had one that I filmed when I still had the really short hair. Mm -hmm. And um, like throughout the vlog, you do see it grow a little bit. So I just went and like everything, like I did the little clippy thing and then pulled everything back so you couldn't. Tell. Yep. <laughs> Although I did realize now that I have the Taylor Swift calendar on my like it hangs on my door because mm -hmm. um, that was the only place on my walls that it made sense to put it right now. Right. I'm like, oh, people are going to know what month this stuff happens in. I'm going to have to stay on top of things. <laughs> I mean, it's not as bad as there being the date on there. It's just the month. Right. So and I can very easily switch back yeah. if I need to film something. Exactly. Or just take it now. <laughs> yep. 
I definitely faked the date on that before. That's why there's nothing dated in this entire office. No. Uh oh. Everyone's loving this hair color. Thank you. I think it looks good. It also makes me look way more tan. So, like, I might just stay with <laughs> That's funny. I love that. Um, hold on. Itha had uh, sorted my socks. Very nice. 21 new, 21 new pairs of sooty, sooty socks. Like socks you wear with sneakers. Yeah. Ready for summer. Time for roomies and an ice cold can of Coke. Very nice. I mean, uh, I have Celsius, but same thing. Other carbonated beverages are also available. I don't have any of my iced tea ready. I need to do that at some point. I so. I officially like this is my new this is my new energy like consumption yeah. caffeine consumption. So I'm trying not to do ca uh, coffee as much mm -hmm. because well I'm trying not to drink my calories <laughs> essentially, mm -hmm. and because I do a protein shake in the morning, I'm like I don't also need a coffee. Mm -hmm. But then by noon I'm like oh I'm tired. Yeah. Are you having <laughs> bad caffeine headaches? It hasn't been terrible. Okay, that's good. Yeah. In the afternoon, sometimes I get them. But, like, I've just been, like, I, I take a Celsius and then, like, I just have it on the way home from work. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't keep me up. <laughs> it doesn't, like, it, it, caffeine does not keep me up. It actually allows me to do things when I get home. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. I understand <laughs> that. I, for me, it is hit or miss. It depends on how far gone I am. Because mm -hmm. um, I know I used to do like a uh, like a tea in the middle of the afternoon, and it didn't necessarily have to have caffeine. It was just that break that sometimes helped my brain reset. Yeah. Um, well, and like once your brain starts creating a habit, yeah, um, then you're like it becomes one o'clock, and you're like, I need some tea. My tea. My tea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, my brain is craving the taste. <laughs> no sugar. Um, the only thing that I have to be careful about is if I drink like a high caffeine tea late in the, too late in the day, mm -hmm. um, and late has become later. It does occasionally mean that there will be like a, a day that I'm like, it's 3am and I'm still like, it didn't used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it does now. I don't, um, I mean, I don't think caffeine is the reason I can't sleep. I think it's just like, I... I'm like, I can uh, survive on five hours of sleep mm -hmm. and then that's all I need. And even though I actually need way more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes your brain just don't do that. My dad is the same way where like he wakes up at whether he wants to or not. I mean, he had a little stint of really sleeping in because he was on an antibiotic that just wiped him out. Yeah. Um, Because he's got big old staph infection on his side right now. <laughs> yeah. My mom is fussing over it and he's like, no, it's getting better. It just looks gross. Oh, yeah. Um, but he wakes up at like 5 a.m. regardless yeah. of when he goes to bed. Yeah. Yeah, like I didn't go to bed until like 2 this morning. Mm -hmm. um, and Good. I know, it's like, that was so late for me. And I still woke up at like 7, 10. God damn it, <laughs> I I was like, I didn't need to be anywhere until nine. Why did I get up so early? <laughs> that was me on Thursday, <laughs> Wednesday. I woke up at like 540 with an alarm set to go off at 730 so I could get up, throw some clothes on. No, seven. So I could get up, throw some clothes on, go to. And I finally about 615, 630. I was like, I'm, I'm just going to get up and I'm going to make my tea and I'll have time to drink my tea before we have to be at the airport. Right, exactly. So. Come here. Come here. Come here. Ethan wants to say hi. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope I get to see him in August. I'm not sure what our plans are yet, but <laughs> I, I hope I'm not sure what his in plans are. Him. Currently, his two brain cells are on vacation. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to DC with me. Yeah. So that makes sense. Well, like, currently, I don't know where I'm flying into because I know those plans are up in the air so it could affect yeah I'm I think into. I'm gonna fly into Burbank okay the day before and stay mm -hmm. with my brother-in-law that makes sense for, like not the, not the weekend because it is too far of a drive in but um but just to high nice nice yeah but at the time I'm like I haven't made I I bought my Apollycon tickets like three weeks ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> I 
have no plans for August. No. <laughs> June has I to figure, happen first. I figure we start talking about that towards the end of June. <laughs> yeah. Unless you start talking on Shay's plans. I don't yeah. Know. I was like, I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. I'm gonna be there when I'm there. Exactly. I'm uh, like, more, there more will be <laughs> right. I was like, there will be hotels somewhere. Also, yeah. you could always fly into Salt Lake and then we could road trip. Well, that was my thought. <laughs> <laughs> that was my thought. I was like, okay, am I flying into Salt Lake and going with? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yet. Yeah. Because I also don't know that I could take a company car all the way down to California. I mean, if we needed to, I am legal. We, we could deal with renting one. <laughs> yeah, I don't, so. yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> but again, again, it's like, August. That's August. <laughs> My brother was trying to convince me to come over in August, and I was like, mm, I don't know. I might have to see what flights are from Salt Lake to, or from both places to Baltimore, though. Oh, yeah, you can just fly back. That fly way. back to him and then fly from there home. Because if I'm going to be out and taking a vacation and I'm not doing, because like once we hit October, November, December, me Many traveling has to be a short thing. Like the fact that I'm going up to Toronto for a weekend. Yeah. Not great, but I'm still going to do it. Like, that's my Thanksgiving. And then I'll just work my ass off around Thanksgiving. Yeah. So. Most stuff, like, that you're going to be doing isn't going to be over Thanksgiving weekend anyways. Yeah. Well, it's the weekend before Thanksgiving. Oh. Then I'm going. And normally I would stay longer. I'd be like, yeah, I'll just stay up for, like, a week or so. But I'm like, no, I think I'm going to have to actually, like, fly back. da 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 Yeah. That makes sense. ready to go. Thanksgiving week. I thought I thought I was missing Thanksgiving. I was so excited. <laughs> I thought I was going to get an out. No, I think Thanksgiving is late this year. Yeah. I think there's five Thursdays. Yeah. So, anyways, what are are you able to tell us what you are currently working on reading? Uh, I can tell you that I'm reading Find Me by a person. <laughs> Ashley something. <laughs> I cannot tell you anymore. <laughs> I'm mm, I'm so bad about that as well. Like I, yeah, this is bot checking it, checking it when I am like literally looking, like holding it. Like so many videos have me check. I I have to cut out the first time I say the book's name because right. I say the book's name and I'm like bye that person. Yep. Um, Sometimes Ashley I and Rostek. Okay. Ashley and Rostek. Also, and can it, we appreciate the prettiness? It is very pretty. I like that one. No. Wait, I want the link to that one, Brianna. It's the, oh, it it's the iPad. I need a keyboard. Huh? It's what? I need a keyboard. Oh, it's on iPad Air. Yeah, okay. I didn't need a keyboard. So yeah, I needed I'm, something that would hold my pen. Mm hmm. I wish I had a keyboard that would hold my pen, but all of the ones I kept finding were too bulky in my opinion. And so yeah, I was that, like, that's specifically what I did not want. But like, for the most part, this is going to be like note taking stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause it's easier to carry this around in meetings mm -hmm. than it is um, like a notebook. Yeah. And I can't, I can't do notes on it. Like I can't type out notes because my notes usually have like arrows and then like, <laughs> Yeah. Also remember this. <laughs> and see, I need mine for filling out um, application forms. Right. And so it's so just easier to be able to type and all of that. And while I do need the pin because I'm always taking a big bag with me, mm -hmm. I just put the pin in the bag with me and hope that I remember. You might perfect. look at something like a pin loop that you can also mm -hmm. put on the outside oh, of it. That, that might be smart. Because mine is full. Like I know Loisterm. Loisterm has pen loops that you can buy. Okay. And if you get one that's big enough, then it might fit the iPad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I might have to look into that because I know like I specifically part of why I got mine is because it's it's obviously magnetically in there. Mm -hmm. And so I can actually if I need to pull the iPad, like the iPad out comes out really easily. Right. So 
Yeah, um, when I like, with my old job, we had Surface Pros, which is like Microsoft's mm -hmm. version of the iPad, okay. and it had a keyboard attached to it, but then also it had a pin loop on the top of our, of the case. Very nice, very nice. So that might be something to look at. Yeah, I'm technically I think my pin would attach to my iPad. I just don't trust it. It is magnetic, but it's not a very good magnet. Yeah. So, um, but I specifically wanted the green iPad. So then I got this. So it's like, this is like nice. a clear case. So I could actually like Kindle decorate it Ooh! because the case, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The case itself is, oh, now it doesn't want to come out. It's clear. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Don't care. Okay. That's Sorry. not important. That's nice. I got the yellow one. Nice. That's the because like the regular iPad, iPad, right? Yeah, I like have the, the regular iPad. Yeah. Apparently the iPad 4 or the iPad Air 4 is the same thing as the new iPad, but was a hundred dollars mm -hmm. cheaper. It just has not as good of a camera. And I was like, I'm never using this camera, so it's fine. Yeah. I got mine because I wanted a little extra storage in case I decided to use it to start doing like videos and those kinds of things on it. Yeah, I so. think this one's like 256. So it's not nice. bad. Nice. Or like 256 gigabytes. Yes, that's what I've got. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's, I think standard is 64 supposedly, but like I've gone through 64 gigabytes so quickly when I had that on phones and stuff. Yeah. Like, I don't want anything less than 128 if I'm going to be having to put apps and stuff on something. And a lot of my job involves apps. Right. So, um, but I got plenty of space to like download music and stuff now. If Yay. I need it. Hooray. Okay. So shall we, does a 45 work for you? Sounds good. Beautiful. Um, hopefully I will be done with this freaking book by the time we're done. Like I don't, I don't just like it. It just, has been way too many sprints. Oh, I'm reading uh, the message, the fourth Animorphs book. So that's one way to get thirty and thirty. It is, and also this vlog is is supposed to be going out uh, in two weeks. Oh, it's a so. vlog. It's a vlog. Yeah, yep. It's for a vlog project. It's part of the books I was not at. Like this is one. I was just saying, is this like the the second episode of the Cheetah Girls? Yeah, this is one that I explicitly was told I was not allowed to read because they lied to their parents. Oh, see, I was told I wasn't allowed to read that, but wasn't like it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to read it. It was that my mom looked at the covers and was like, "This looks dumb." <laughs> Did you look at these covers? No, the, no, because when I was a kid, it was like the ones, yeah, those. This one's a little weird, but like some of the ones where they turn into like mammals and stuff are actually pretty cool to see how they do the progression. I right, I know. I thought they were cool. No, my mom's yeah. like, "This looks stupid." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny oh I think you did you miss when we were talking about like I have no idea why we weren't allowed I can't remember why we weren't allowed to watch Power Rangers because <laughs> I just think we never really watched any type of cartoons yeah. because I always had gymnastics on Saturday mornings mm -hmm. from like 8 to 12 and so I would have been so good at gymnastics and my mother decided not to do that I did it all through middle school and like half of high school yeah yeah and then I'm, i stopped because i got injured and then grew and mm -hmm. then i lost my like my center of gravity changed and so i sucked and so i stopped <laughs> oh no <laughs> see i'm like perfect gymnast type we just you no are, one ever yeah. got me in there, into that yes <laughs> so, too short to have ever been a ballerina which is what i wanted to do at one point right so we, instead of Saturday morning cartoons like a normal child, we listened to Adventures in Odyssey, which was on the radio during our commute to the gym. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> Adventures in Odyssey and Jungle Jam. Uh, <laughs> do, did you, do you remember the one... Where they find Eugene and Connie find the lady having the baby in the car. Yep. I've I have listened to every single Adventures in Odyssey uh, we, up until probably whatever, like volume 40 or so. And then like whatever volume that set was part of, that was the volume we owned, and we listened to that episode. 
Did so you have times. did you have the six cassette series of Darkness Before Dawn where it was like the evil person trying to take over Wits End? God, there were so many times that, that happened. I don't know what this But point. it was like a six it was like six episodes. Like or no, I guess it was twelve because it was like both sides of the tape. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't I'll, I'll have to find it and send you the link to the story, and then you'll be like, "Oh my god, I do, I remember this." We only had the one. So basically, the way that we worked when it came to Adventures and Odyssey, because we weren't in the car on Saturdays, um, or a lot in the morning, so we didn't typically listen to it on the radio. But my mother would get like the the volumes with the cassettes. Sometimes, yeah, with your, where computer. you would get like the big thing that looked like a movie cover, yeah. but it had six because, tapes inside of it. VH, VHS case. Um, yeah. And we also had friends that owned all of them. So we would borrow yeah. a lot from them. My mom ne- didn't really buy any of them. We just had, the, I think, the one that we owned. Um, and we then- also listened to one episode at dinner every single night because back when you had dial-up internet, we didn't want anybody calling the house when we were having dinner. So we would listen to an Adventures in Odyssey episode so that we were using the internet so that nobody would call during dinner. <laughs> like every single night. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, that specific episode with the lady and the baby, and you know how she names the um, the the, the she names the baby Eugenia, uh-huh. right? <laughs> I remember as a child being like, "That's the dumbest thing ever. Why didn't she name her after Connie? Who would name their child Eugenia?" <laughs> <laughs> and that's the name of the main character in my book. <laughs> karma (laughs) (laughs) i played myself (laughs) yeah but you're writing a fantasy so like (laughs) i am writing fantasy that is true and also no one calls her eugenia except her dad and occasionally the love interest uh she everyone calls her gina (laughs) exactly fine so oh man i don't think about adventures in odyssey ever (laughs) anymore (laughs) (laughs) We still well, have I mean, it's, it's, it's stuff, true so. fundy propaganda. It really is. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I'm so tempted to just start a series of me, like, analyzing and talking. Like, this isn't correct. This is not true. This didn't happen. Because so many of them were based on history, too. Oh, yeah. Because they had the, what did he call his machine? The Imagination Station. The Imagination Station. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a fun series on this channel. I don't know how how um relatable it is to people outside of Fundy culture. I don't think it is probably very relatable to people outside of Fundy culture, but like it's one of those things that I feel reasonably okay deconstructing that. <laughs> so also anyway. the head of the like focus on the family is like a terrible person. Oh, what so my we've talked many times about how behind the bastards is my favorite podcast and i have never been as excited for an episode as when i found out that garrison was doing james dobson oh nice like the the main host of the show didn't even like no wait i think garrison was the guest i don't think like the amount of stuff he dug up on james dobson oh it's not pretty Amazing. Like I remember watching the Fundy Friday thing on it. Oh, I don't have I seen that yet. I don't know if I've seen that yet. It's pretty old. Yeah, pro- I think well, she I does watched- it on. I think she does it. It's it's part of her like Bible college series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's not just James Thompson. But my mother you. lived by their whatever their website was that went through all of the movies and told you everything that could be objectionable oh, yeah. in the movies. Oh yeah so funny oh yeah. I, re- I remember going on there and read like mean girls i remember going on there and reading the the mean girls thing and being like i don't understand what the big deal like I, yeah that's that's not cool we don't believe in that but like we don't why don't why do what is the matter with like it's okay it's fine i don't care i know that right. this is bad <laughs> why why would you be worried about me seeing it in a movie like what you actually want to have a con you you can have a conversation with your kid about it no, couldn't, couldn't be our parents. We had a lot of conversations about things, but like there was like 
anyways, the amount of like stuff that she was like, no, you can't watch that for. And I'd be like later watching me like, I don't. Why did you think this was bad? Right. What, was well, it's probably because like someone else told her and like over exaggerated yeah. it. Or like, this thing imagine? that would have gone over your child's head. <laughs> could you imagine? Because like as terrible as Sunday parents in our generation were, okay. could you imagine if they had more of the internet? Like if they had social media? I don't have to imagine. <laughs> like my mother has social media now. Well, I know, but I mean like anymore. growing, like us growing up, like it would be even more strict oh. and like hidden away than we yep. were. Yeah. Well, and I like, we were much more mainstream than a lot of people. I think even then, I think my family was more mainstream. I think even than yours, like more than Rachel's. Right. Um, like that was the group that we were in because a lot of them were interested in doing things kind of by the book, you know, mm -hmm. and like we made our at least our group of homeschoolers made a big deal of making sure that your kids were passing the yearly um, tests that made sure they were learning what they needed to for their grade. All oh, of yeah, that. Yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> Which is surprising um, for Florida, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all of that kind but it's of even stuff. like i mean like it's still happening today like even mm -hmm. like derek's sister homeschools their kids and like one of the one of the kids just took the sat and like did really well on it and his other sister-in-law was like do they even t do they even look at the sat anymore and she's like well we're homeschooled so that's the only score that they have <laughs> yeah especially like i had to do the sat i had to do that for um we also have the FCAT here, but I had to do the SAT because I wanted, I was trying to qualify for a scholarship here called Bright Futures. I mm -hmm. don't know if it's here anymore, but it basically guaranteed you, you were covered, or at least when I started it, it guaranteed that you were covered for four, uh, if you did a full, like full semester, you were covered, your tuition was covered. It did, it did get to a point where it was like, okay, you're covered this much per credit hour. Mm -hmm. Not but like I... Yeah, I did. I did the ACT so I could get into honors. I understand why a lot of people are so frustrated with the idea of homeschooling because how many people came out of it with subpar educations. Absolutely. I have also seen it at the best that it can be, in my opinion. So, like, I understand that, like, there are situations where it might make more sense to let your kid do school at home. But I also yeah, don't but think I don't think I I think band. schooling at home is one thing. But I think that having the parent be the teacher is a different thing. Yeah. Because 90%, 90 is probably generous, probably mm -hmm. more than that, of parents are not qualified to teach well, their no. children, especially through high school. No, no. And I think especially when you get into high school because of the extracurriculars, unless there is a genuine need for the child to be at home, like right. a, a medical need or something, it is better. Regardless of whether you can provide a quality education, it is better for the child to be in a public high school. Correct. You know what I mean? Because there are a lot of opportunities that I missed out on for what I wanted to do because I was not in a public high school. Right. Same. Um, I think unless I think, like you're like an athlete, like I know that like there are gymnasts that will homeschool through high school because they're in mm -hmm. their training almost all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, and like actors and stuff like that, kids with health right. problems that can be helpful. Um, I know with my brother, it wasn't an option for me, but with my brother, we did a lot of Florida virtual online school. Mm -hmm. um, but he also wasn't as self motivated as I was because my mom could be like, "Here is a math textbook. You need to do this lesson today," and I would just do it. And I would, right. okay, I wouldn't just do it. I would procrastinate the heck as much as I could and then I would do it but like you get to see I was actually backwards when I was a kid my mom would send out the entire like she would write out what we had to do for the whole week mm -hmm. and I would have it done by Tuesday morning <laughs> I wish I had that kind of ADHD I have the kind that puts everything off until the last minute because yeah. let me tell you the number of day times that I knew if I did my school work I could be done and have the rest of the day to myself Mm -hmm. But I taught myself the basics of algebra, basically, because we just we bought textbooks and then my mom would have me do like we had a lesson plan and I would teach myself through it. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so, like, yeah. And I think I am, I'm just mad because I wanted to be a pilot when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I could be in a job where I'm making $200,000 a year right now because yeah. that's how much pilots make, like, starting. But my mom was like, well, you don't like math. So you probably couldn't be a pilot. And I didn't like math because she didn't know how to teach math. <laughs> because once I got to college, math made sense. Oh. You froze. I know I did froze. I, you, we, You're back. I, I, I believe uh, the last I heard was I didn't like math because she didn't oh. know how to teach math. Yeah, that, I didn't like math because I didn't, because that's, like, she didn't know how to oh, teach it. and I'm. Are you back now? Am I back now? No, I back no. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you can't talk about that, that subject. You just can't talk about math. No, as soon as I got to college, I was like, oh, math makes sense. Yeah. I was very lucky that when I did algebra, um, I went to a teacher. He's at, He actually was one of my dad's friends until he died a couple of years ago. Um, but we had a, uh, I went to the local community college and there was a teacher there that, um, my friend had taken him and she said, he made this so much fun. And so I took that and I was like, yeah, he, like, he got, he's the reason I got through algebra. Yeah. Like, and algebra was frustrating because I was good at it and I enjoyed it, but because I was so prone to mixing my numbers and stuff up when I was mm -hmm. writing out problems, I would get bad grades. See, I would get bad grades because I could, because probably ADHD, I figured out how to solve the problem my own way. Yeah. And, but like, you have to show your work. And so like, obviously like I was doing it a different way. And so then you only get like half credit because you got the right answer, but you didn't do it the right way, which is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, it's, it's still right. <laughs> I, know. I had one time that he, my teacher was like, I don't know how you got the right answer, but you got the right answer. So I'm giving you the credit for it, but I don't, uh, th what happened? <laughs> huh? This is funny. Okay. For real now, we're going to go into a sprint. <laughs> okay. Okay. I wrote you in 45. Okay. We're so bad. Uh, where is it? There we go. Three, two, one, let's go.
alone. Walk them oh. back. Give me a moment. Let me. So I almost finished. I got a little distracted because. Um... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I got a little distracted because I bought something for um, someone in the drop. And I was we were coordinating like how that was gonna happen. So gotcha. Fun because I had I I had someone who'd missed the first drop of the sign stuff and really gotcha. wanted the vinyl. And I was like, hey, it's up. Are you and they didn't respond, so I went and bought it anyways. Yeah. Um, but it turns out that so they ended up getting the side vinyl, but she also had a friend that was looking for it and couldn't get it at all because she was in Australia. Gotcha. So, Thanks. Provided the vinyl arrives, I will be getting it over to her. Nice. Anyways, um, I'm almost done. I've got like a, two chapters left. You can do it. I got this. How many of these do you have to? Is this the last one you have to read? I have to read one more because I'm trying to do the first five because it's okay. all there are five kids. Um, and so I, originally what I wanted to do with the cheater girls was also do the first five. It just didn't uh -huh. work out that way. Right. So I didn't. But this one, I want to do the first five. <coughs> Those are short, so shouldn't yeah, be. Yeah, they hard. are very short. They are. They they take like an hour, maybe two hours to read usually. Unless so. you get distracted, then they take all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Way too long. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me out like that. How did everyone else do, guys? Let us let us know in the comments. Um, I got fifty-two pages read. Nice. So, I mean, if not, if, if nothing else, it reads fast. <laughs> like, I can just skim. Yep. Important uh, detail. Okay. There's, <laughs> Moving on. There's more than one note on my iPad that just says, why is this paragraph in, written? Why is this paragraph included? Um, I hate that. That was okay, really I actually do not need your grocery list. This sounds like you were trying to hit word count for NaNoWriMo. <laughs> uh, they might have been trying to hit word count for their publisher. <laughs> it's, it's a KU book, so. Oh. Anyways. In that case, you get to decide what, what the word count is. Yep. That's wild. Like, no, what's wild is the amount of five star reviews on this book. I mean, some people like stuff that's really oh, like overwritten and they go, it's a, it's a romance, right? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people they rate on whether or not the couple they like the couple and the couple ends up together in a way they think is good. <laughs> also, it's like a dark romance, and these children are in high school, it feels gross. That's a little weird. So weird. Is the romance itself at least adult? I don't know. We haven't gotten that far yet. Oh, gosh. I don't think there's a ton of smut in Because it's like a four book series. Okay. Like, because I can see if you were starting with characters in high school and going through their lives or something like that. Yeah, I mean, like, she is... But She's like, she turns 18, like, in a couple of months. So, like, I imagine the second book is probably smuttier. Mm -hmm. would, won't be able to tell you. Because <laughs> you're like, I'm not reading more of this. Hell no. As, but I just, um, I feel really bad because I haven't liked a single one of the books that were given to me. Oh, no. I'm like, I hope we can still be friends. <laughs> Oh, is this a, a try for, uh, yeah, for like trying something? Okay, okay. Yeah. It's fine. Oh no, it's fine. It's fine. You'll see it all on Saturday. Oh dear, I'm worried for you. In between then and now, you'll get a fan row vlog where I hated a book and am absolutely obsessed with another one. So, oh, that's great. 
That's very nice. It's the first time I've ever bumped up a rating a week later, or at least in a long time. Yeah, I've done that once or twice, but not very, very more. More, I'm more likely to, after some thought, go, ah, this wasn't actually four stars. It's more I've done that. I've done that. But like, less likely to bump it up. For it was for Boozy Book Club last year when we read the fiance farce, we mm -hmm. both gave it five stars. And then the next week when we were doing our discussion, we were like, oh, but there's this. There's this isn't a five star read. <laughs> But I had originally given the book four and a half stars and like, I, it was just like, there was some, there's, I mean, it's not, it's not a perfect book. So like, it shouldn't mm -hmm. be a five star, but like a week and a half later, I'm like obsessed. I'm still obsessed with the characters. Yeah. So I'm like, it's five stars. <laughs> yeah. with, with me, it's usually like, oh, listening to myself talk about this book. This is not a four star book. Yeah. I talk about this like it's a, I like I talk, it was like the most recent example is My Heart is a Chainsaw. I talk about this like it's fucking per Percy Jackson. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, I'm very excited. I finally got the a physical copy of the final book in that trilogy. Um, I had to go to a little local bookstore for that because Barnes nice. and Noble doesn't have it apparently. Barnes and Noble is, yeah. I, I don't understand it. Like my Barnes and Noble, as far as I could tell, had zero Stephen Graham Jones. Interesting. With, I mean, I guess the, with the demographic that they're working with, I could understand why indigenous horror is not something that's on. I was going to say that it was at our Barnes. And, it was at my Barnes and Noble. Yeah, but... I remember my heart as a chainsaw being there and stuff like that. Yeah. And yet they still had Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zeffin on there. Yeah, you know. I'm like, why is this still on? This has been out two years. Why is it still on your new shelf? Yeah. Um, has it really been I two years for that book? Wow. Yeah, it's because I didn't, it won Goodreads for 2022, right? It did, yeah. Yeah, so I remember that being... Because uh, I, I bought it for the Goodreads video, which I'm now getting rid of it because of stuff the author said online. <laughs> yeah. So, it happens. Um, yeah, like that that book is going to end up as a one of the host favorites for Amazing Readathon. And I was like, it's not my choice. But also, like, this person had such a hard time finding host favorites that weren't SMP titles. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just, like, for the genre that they were in. And I was like... Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to police that stuff. I'll, I'm policing SMP, but not, yeah, that not makes sense. personal opinions on authors. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes, you know, you can't control what someone else's favorites are. Right. Because the thing is, is that, like, there are, people can have favorites for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. Like, I will forever say that The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is a favorite book of mine because it's so like it ha it I read it at such a pivotal time in my life mm -hmm. and it means so much to me personally. Is Taylor Jenkins Reid a great person? No, absolutely not. <laughs> but like that book specifically played such an important role in my life yeah. and like a pivot point that like I can't not say that that's a favorite book. Yeah. And I also think that like there's stuff that I'm aware of because I'm on Twitter. And so I see when people post threads of here are all the ways that Gabrielle Zevin plagiarized her work. Right. But if you're not on Twitter, you don't actually, Twitter, you wouldn't know. You may not know that. Yeah. That's the same thing with House in the Cerulean Sea. I follow several indigenous reviewers who have been like, here's all of the stuff that this man has said. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. And I haven't, anyways, I like, I have feelings about like how he marketed it and I don't yeah I'm just like you know what I understand why it's important to some people and all of that stuff right exactly but, that's it. that's like that that's a, another really good example because I feel yeah. like a lot of people really resonated with certain characters in that book but it is not what I am going to read specifically because of how right and you're like and you you can say like okay like I'm not gonna add this to any of my recommendation yeah. videos but yeah. Like, I'm also not going to get upset if someone else does. I'm going to get upset if someone recommends Harry Potter. 
that like you know what I mean because you have to be under a rock I've had not- moments where I've been like oh I know certain people are going to be on on sprints and I'm like I how do I broach this subject and do I say something or no yeah because I know we disagree on sometimes like what should and shouldn't be read right so that's why we were doing I think the last time we did 24-hour sprints I was like hey just Make sure you're not doing one of the titles that I'm actively boycotting. Thanks. Right. That's great. Um, so it's. Yeah. But there's, I mean, like for stuff like that with people that are like, just like, I don't, I don't want to say like that there's levels of problematic, but there kind of are. There are because, well, like, cause I've seen threads. They're like, I'm not reading this author and and it will be like this person is a pedophile or a sex pest also ranked the same as someone who just said something like not even truly offensive, just like said something out of pocket on Twitter and was like out of pocket or even like uneducated. Yeah. So it's like, I even like, I feel like, and this is like probably even a take that like you and I disagree on, but I feel like the hate of Rebecca Yaros is a little bit overblown. Mm-hmm. because I think that she just rose too quickly in popularity that she didn't know how to be in the public mm-hmm. and like maybe shut her mouth. I mean, there's a lot of women from her background that didn't don't know. how. To right. Act. Exactly. Especially like the way that she grew up when mm-hmm. you get thrust onto like the today show and then like you're the New York times bestseller and you didn't have, you don't have a publicist, you don't have an agent or like, a PR person like how does she not have an agent I mean she has an agent but she has like but it's more on like I don't know like it's it's different like between like like you you probably don't have like a, a list of like hey maybe don't talk about these subjects on Twitter you know what I mean and yeah. so when you like because if you notice like now she doesn't say these things yeah well yeah she I know just, I mean, she doesn't she just doesn't enter the conversations yeah. And so like she's learning at least yeah. to not be public me, with just, bad opinions. It is a combination of how I felt about Fourth Wing, the undeserved hype that I feel it's gotten. Fair. <laughs> Fair. Own, knowing her own like her own personal stances on what's going on in Palestine. I'm just like, I'm not I'm if I'm trying to avoid people who are outright supporting the genocide or have spoken in like generally spoken in support of outside of the just like we support it like that thing that was going up on October 7th like have outside of that I'm just, I don't want to mess around there's other authors to read no that's fair and like but I just like, like I feel like sometimes people are getting almost like judged for liking this book mm-hmm. or talking about it <laughs> I do a little bit but I mean, is it is it a fantastic piece of literature? No, but like but it's more for that. It's it's still a fun time. It's kind of like yeah. a train wreck. It's more for that or more for when like I see people saying they don't like stuff in other books that is similar to stuff that's happened in Fourth Wing. And I'm like, you gave this five stars despite but it's, having that. I, but it's all like an enjoyment thing. Like yeah. the thing is, is that like especially iron flame specifically like that book i read 650 pages in 36 hours because like it's a bingeable type of book and Mm -hmm. so like i don't know i just feel like you can she specifically is an author that i feel like everyone went to like jumped to attack maybe too i i don't know about that I just know that I notice a difference between when authors do stuff that is um like there is a massive difference to how the book community responds when it is something that is a controversy or an author saying something out of pocket when it comes to race and colonialism versus when the author says something out of pocket or is actively attacking queer people. Like I see a massive divide in how we react to stuff that are race-based versus gender and sexuality. Oh yeah, 100%. I feel like, I mean, like, I, I feel like the canceling is is very like unequal. It doesn't happen. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's just like, it's unequal. Like you'll cancel yeah. one person for saying something minute, but then not another person for mm-hmm. not you specifically, but like the book journal in general. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and and I, so, I feel like everyone has the ability to learn and grow other than JK Rowling because she's proven that she's not going to. Here's the thing. I She has the ability. It is a choice she is making. Right. And she's proven again and again that she's not. So, um, but yeah, I just, I, I am in too many BIPOC queer spaces not to notice like the massive difference there. For oh, them to I mean, yeah. Like, if you are a successful white woman, like you're not going to get canceled nearly as quickly for doing mm -hmm. something. Or the not same. you're not going to get canceled. You're going to have people making excuses for you in a way that, for example, um, when Sharon accidentally was like, "Hey, please buy my book," in that thread they did about the the publishing stuff, like right. people. It was like people were waiting to jump on them. Oh yeah, or something. And I guarantee you that if it had been a white queer author, there would have been like there would have been people that were like, "Hold up, wait a second. Like, way fewer people saying the things that they were saying." And it was so frustrating to watch yeah. that. That's, I give yeah. her, I give her zero more chances. If she wants more chances, she's got to earn them. Oh, one hundred percent. Like, I, I genuinely believe that you can be a terrible person and you can be against a community and then you can turn your life around and find Jesus. No, I'm not, I'm not find Jesus. But, like, you can turn your life around and start advocating for, hey, I was wrong. Advocating for education. Advocating for these are the things I believe. Yeah, like, you own what you did. Own what you did and you can do that. Yeah. I, but, I like, don't clearly see her doing that is not because she's still actively donating to campaigns yeah. that are the opposite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like she's doubling down and it's funny because like if she just kept her mouth shut, she could be doing all of this in private and none of us would even know. Yeah. That's the funniest thing. Like she doesn't yeah. have and that's why it's I it's ideological more than it is um like any sort of like beliefs true belief system in my opinion right so uh let's see i agree if someone writes something bad in the first book uh, they write but in book five they have evolved that is good if you do something mm -hmm. bad with them say sorry and do better you can have more i agreed i agree with that um i also think that like for me um especially when it comes to queer and bipoc authors if it is something that i have forgiven a straight white cis author for Oh, 100 percent yeah. I'll be like, you know what? This person gets another chance from me, unless it is something that is fully egregious that like even back then I should have been like, no, cancel this author. Right. Like, for example, donating 70,000 pounds. There's there is nothing that's going to get me to to a anti-queer or anti-trans legislation. That's that wouldn't have I wouldn't have cared about that when I was. 18, 19 in my early to mid 20s. Right. I recognize that that was a bad bad attitude back then. That was wrong. <laughs> I'm very glad no one knew 2014, Margaret. Okay. It's true. <laughs> like, I pre pre 2016, Margaret was definitely a no. And even up until like 2018, there was stuff mm. that was like. I feel like it really wasn't until I entered booktube that I like started like actually like looking outside of my own personal bubble. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I because when you grow up in the South, that's not like yeah. you know, it takes a while to like realize that other people exist. Yeah. I know I started somewhere around 2014 because that was when Ferguson happened. Yeah. Um and that was some of like the um the the photo evidence that came out of whatever the fuck his name was saying that he'd been wounded or he he'd been beat up by Michael Brown. And then if you look at the photos, no, he hadn't. Right. You know, there's no there's no there's no evidence of this bruising you're claiming happened. Right. Absolutely none. Um, and that was what really got me started. I mean, to like I'd been following different tumblr accounts um i believe the one that i was the main one was like writing in color mm -hmm. specifically because i knew that there were tropes and things that i wanted to avoid in my own writing right and i wanted to be educated on those things um, but yeah no <laughs> 
Uh, let's see. Sorry, we'll get the rest of these comments. Julie says, I ate dinner and fell asleep for most of that sprint. I'm going to try and read the name of the win now because I'm on a time crunch. Get it. Get it done. Julie, you have to finish that. Oh, no. What does Julie have to finish that? By Saturday. By today? Next Saturday. Oh, okay. She's got plenty of time. Next Saturday. <laughs> well, to have it read and the video edited. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's Ross. It's fine. I don't know why it's coming out all squeaky. Listen, listen. You can edit as you go. Editing as you go is a thing. So you'll be fine. Sure. Uh, Renee says, I have been, I suppose I've been lucky. I've lived in Australia 12 months when I was eight. Lived in Chile 11 months when I was 16. Always knew the world was bigger than my bubble. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I, so I did not like. I got my passport in when I went to Brazil. Yeah. Like, so that was like what, two years ago? Three years ago, yeah. Two years ago. I got mine back in 2012, I think. Yeah. Because I went to Ireland. And I used that password exactly once. And I will probably have used this passport exactly, or I will have used this passport exactly twice by this time next year. And I don't know where else I'm going. Uh, Julie has time, but plenty is generous. I had to get the rainy taste test video done because it goes live tomorrow. Oh, I'm very curious about that one. Understandable. Understandable. I, uh, think I'm going to need to read some manga today as well. <laughs> I am relatively caught up. I feel I like... know you're relatively caught up. I can look at your stats. I think I'm like maybe one behind. Mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. If I finish this one today, I'll be caught up. Yeah. And then if I finish crossed tomorrow and then um, probably a short audiobook Thursday, Monday, yeah. then it'll count because I have to start. I've got three spiff bow books left that I have to finish by next Saturday. Ooh. Um, well, like the video doesn't go up till the following week, but I want to film it Saturday yeah. before I leave for a Polycon. Um, so I need to at you least- You can edit on the road. Huh? You said you can edit on the road. Yeah, so. theoretically. But like, I think, oh, I, think, I think that video goes up Thursday, but mm -hmm. I have to film it, right? Like, yeah. Or not this Thursday. I, like, think, I mean- you probably are in the same situation as I am, as the, the Wi-Fi at the hotel is better than the Wi-Fi at home. So what's really funny is that my my internet went out last week um, mm -hmm. for a couple of hours, like just would not turn on, and then finally reset the router and it worked, and now my upload speed is fantastic. Oh, beautiful. I, like, I don't know what y'all did, but thank you. <laughs> Maybe I should ask them to come out and reset the, the router then. <laughs> Maybe that's what's going on. Oh, I, we have to reset the router about like once a month. Ooh. Just kind of, just to kind of give it a refresh. Yeah, that's so annoying. I'm hoping, I, just, I was really hoping that when they built the temple, they would put Google Fiber in. I was just hoping mm -hmm. that the Mormons would help us out there. No. <laughs> Apparently, well, we're still not, we're still not eligible for Google, for Google Fiber. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the, the places will not let you get Google Fiber because they have to dig stuff up to put it in. Well, so, like, on the other side of the freeway, it's available, but not on this mm -hmm. side of the freeway. But because the temple was going up, I was like, they're going to need fast Wi-Fi, right? Like, they need... <laughs> sure, why not? Um, I don't know. <laughs> and then um, the... And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll search for it now, and it's still not available. Oh, that's annoying. So. Yeah. And it is what it is. it is. It is what it is. But I try to get, so basically what I try to do is get my, all my videos edited by Monday and then mm -hmm. I upload them all when I get to work on Monday. Cause it's really fast at work. Like, because it's mm -hmm. obviously it's an office. So like a 30 minute video will upload in three minutes. I've definitely used work Wi-Fi and work, um, like, actually, no, not the work Wi-Fi. I think I, I brought in my little and I would plug it directly into the internet. Yeah. And upload using that. Yeah. On my break. 
But I had to start scheduling my videos now instead of just letting them go live, like just changing it from unlisted to live. Um, yeah. Because now there's a couple of people at work found my channel. And I was like, including like someone that works in HR. <laughs> so now I have to like make them go live, like, you know, at 8 a.m. or whatever, so that it looks like I just scheduled it the night before. Yep. Yep. <laughs> just a, a brief. Brief wait. Yes, it's fine. It's fine. So, but if I schedule everything on Monday, then my patrons get early access for like all mm -hmm. three videos or like two. If like obviously like this week with the collab happening, I'm not doing a they won't get early access for that one. Um, but the other one, most of the time they get access to all of them and then I could just like that I'm done for the whole week. It's great. Yeah. It's nice. a great system when it works. <laughs> when it works and when you're able to stay on top of stuff. Right. Yeah. Coming back. Yeah. Uh, Polycon's not going to like, although it really won't be terrible for a Polycon. It's just that next mm -hmm. weekend is going to be like so much filming. Oh boy. Yeah. Like, that's going to be a lot. Cause I'm going to have to film all the way into May, including like the amazing announcement. You got this. What, yeah. Where would you start? I didn't ask you to start. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. I'm at, Okay, I don't care about interruptions. Let's go at seriously. Please stop. This thing is ignoring everything I'm asking it to do. I hate it. All right, I'm gonna go ahead because I'm gonna go for my walk. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put up an hour for this one. Sounds good. And I will see y'all in three, two, one. Let's go.
we are back and I, I read some. Congratulations. Thank you. I finished my book. That one got four stars. The others have gotten three. That nice. one got four stars. Nice. That one was very cute and cool. And I liked a lot of what, like I, they, they were very subtle things that I, I was mildly impressed by that a white author got right. <laughs> oh, nice. We love it when that happens. So I'm like, this woman was writing in 96. Mm -hmm. She knew enough to, to, to put these things in. Right. I was like, wow, that's, that's smart. Right. Um, cause like, uh, and I, I, some, someone might have other, like when the main character is describing herself, like none of the other characters have mentioned what their race is, blah, 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 or their skin tone. And like, they've talked about the skin tone of other characters. Mm -hmm. She doesn't mention it. Like if you had not, if you didn't see the front of the book, you would not know from her description of herself. Right. So there was other stuff in there. Um, <clears throat> but like from her description of herself, it was done exactly like the other characters had been done in the last three books. Gotcha. So, nice. Um, I liked it. Things are getting wild now. <laughs> <laughs> I only read about 30 pages. I needed a break mm -hmm. from it. Um, and so I was watching Heather's new vlog. Oh, very nice. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> That is fun. And I also read, hold on. I also read 30 pages of The Only Good Indians while I was on my walk, which is a nice. mind fuck of a book. Yeah, nice. Love it. Like, there are books that I'll read and I'll be like, yeah, anyone who dislikes this book is disliking it for the wrong wrong reasons when it's by a BIPOC author. And then there's yeah. this book where I'm like, there are genuine and win reasons that certain people should not read this book. Fair. That's fair. I liked whatever that first one was. My Heart is a Chainsaw. Yes. I liked that one. But honestly, it's the only book that I've liked from him. Yeah. I think it also, like, because Kara was talking about one of his novellas. Um, and I think it has to do with, like, in his books, he kind of, like, the uh, intensity can be spread out a little bit more. Because she was true. talking about, like, this had this and this and this in this little novella. And I was like, holy shit, that's a lot, my dude. Yeah, like that was it. Because I read The Night of the Mannequins. I love like it. a lot of people really like. But it felt like you were getting whiplash. Yeah. The entire time. And I'm just like, mm, this should have been a novel. Yeah, yeah. And I think he gets, I think there's a little bit more of that intensity in, um, well, actually, no, not necessarily. But like, I, I really like what he's able to do with pacing and tension and tone of the novel. In yeah, the because I feel like, especially in like horror specifically, I feel like you have to have some calmer moments. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the act, the tension actually gets lessened because yeah. if everything is up here, then you actually don't know tension. Yeah, and you have to continually be raising the straight stakes if you're going to be doing that. Which right, and that's just do awesome. in a in a small version, but um, yeah, so you have to have the quieter moments um, for you to like really mm -hmm. appreciate the the higher stakes. Yeah, and that's why um, like the novella just didn't work for me. And then the only good Indians has triggers that I don't want to deal with. Yeah, I the the only good Indians has probably more triggers I think for people than my heart yeah. is a chainsaw would have. Like yeah. the amount of animal death that has happened in this book. I'm yep. like, I know people who should not read this book. Yeah. But I'm still having a good time with it. That's good. Mm -hmm. There was a there was a moment there where I was like, oh man, I'm not Steven, I'm not, what are you doing, man? What yeah. are you doing? I don't know. I don't know if I like where this is going, dude. <laughs> and, and then he put that one little twist in there that I was like, Oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> Continue on, sir. Continue. Carry on. Carry on. Um, how did everyone else do? Um, Brianna, how are you feeling about your book? Are you ready to take your hair out yet? I can't tell you because you it's can't. for a vlog. It's for a vlog. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. 
<laughs> You'll find out on Saturday. Yay. <laughs> uh, which means that whoever the vlog is for is probably either someone who watches my channel or knows people who watch my channel. Well, it's just that like all of us are keeping it really close to the vest. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, Gemstone is back. Hello. Well, uh, I'm back. I've got a few more hours of cleaning in and now I'm going to relax and maybe fold laundry. Go for that. Do it. <laughs> I have laundry sitting on my bed that I need to fold. <laughs> yeah. Probably I actually gonna... like, well, I put it in my basket in the closet yesterday because I went to bed at two o'clock in the morning. I was like, oh crap, I didn't fold this laundry. I'll just do it tomorrow. But then this morning I was like, I'm going to put it back on the bed so that I have to do it tonight. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because wow. it's like work stuff. And I'm like, I don't want it to get wrinkled. And if I just leave it in the bath, it's just going to stay there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the nice thing about Florida is you can like hang stuff up the night before or yeah. like hang it up when you take a shower and it'll be fine in yeah. like five minutes. You can't do that here. But you can't do that where it's dry. <laughs> you cannot do that there. <laughs> you cannot, yeah. Um, probably going to finish Amina Al Sarafi, then read One Dark Window. Oh, I liked that one. I haven't read One Dark Window yet, but I liked Amina Al Sarafi. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Um, I. <laughs> It was very funny because there is a whole crop of people who um, are discovering that Shannon is a white Muslim woman. And I'm just I like, feel like we recycle the same conversation like every time every she publishes time. a book. Every time. I'm just like, <laughs> she's, she's very vocal on her website that she is white. Yeah. That she was a convert and that she does not want to be included on any BIPOC list. Yeah. Like if you're doing something based on religion, cool. If you're not, don't include her right yeah but we like we recycle that conversation so much and yeah it's it's and i remember like i went to look and see if i could find the um the um like what she'd said a long time ago and i because i remember she said something about like well she wanted to be able to write about like the history of her religion Right. It's the most important thing in her life. And I'm like, I you can't like as long as you're doing a good job and you're making sure you're like doing things to what your community and I, I don't think I don't mean the greater, I mean your community right. is is willing to have shared and stuff. Like I don't think you can tell someone no, you know, no. in regards to some of that. Well, and it's not like she's using a fake name, like it's her married name. Yeah. It's her married name. Um and it is her real religion. Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't she's think there's any the like team. piggybacking or writing outside of your lane because mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's it, like there is a question, like there is a question of how to do that, but like mm -hmm. whether or not she's valid for doing that is a completely different thing. Right. Julie said Well, because 18. it's like part of her identity. Like, it's yeah. just like if I, who came out as queer at 27, started writing queer fiction. Is it, I didn't grow up queer, so I don't get to write queer fiction. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it's not I mean, it's not race. It's, just, it's religion. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> I understand to some extent that people may be... Um, like, there is a question of, should a white woman be writing brown characters, et cetera, et cetera. But the... But so I think that if you engage in that, and if you don't let white people write brown characters or any, like, out, then you probably are not getting the representation. I understand that. My, uh, the, 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 it's more like the main character. Are you writing outside your lane or are you, and she's still, she's sticking to her lane to like in the, as far as what she wants to write, like yeah. the religion, if that makes sense. Um, like I get why some people kind of side eye it and they don't like it. And I, I, I think unless you're writing like, over somebody or you're yeah. talking over somebody, then there's a problem. Yeah. And it like, would be very if different talking. if she was trying to write a contemporary from the eyes of a brown Muslim girl versus, oh, I want to set my, my high fantasy that's not even in this world in Cairo <laughs> at yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. For like less than a hundred pages. <laughs> at the very beginning so um and i know that a lot of the other muslim authors that are popular do support her and do appreciate that she's writing right so that means that she's not talking over them yeah so she is 
Yeah, and they um, support each they all support each other. Yeah. So um Julie hit 18% progress. All right, we are almost at the end of our time, but I think maybe one more short sprint potentially. Like I'm probably gonna hop off so that I can do dinner. Okay. okay. Maybe let's say I say I think 25 minutes probably. And then we'll be done. And I'll go. I'll probably start the dinner making process. Yeah. No, actually, no, tonight's really easy. So I probably will wait until we're done. There you go. To do that. So let me pop that up. Um, before we go, just in case you're not here, when we get back, is there anything you want to plug on your channel? I had my Scattergorathon vlog go up this morning. Okay, I'm going to watch Beautiful. that. And then I'm going to be sprinting Monday night. I'm skipping tomorrow's sprints because I don't have the spoons for it. But okay. I'm going to do some Monday night sprints at 7 p.m. Eastern. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's, I think it focuses most as it, the book focuses mostly on religion and race. And the fact is the history of her religion is largely BIPOC, at least that's, and that's, that's kind of my thing. Like you can't write about your religion in a historical sense. Because, but it's also a fantastical yeah. look at it. Like she's not even writing historical fiction. She's writing fantasy that happens to have a Muslim influence. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's like I agree with that. But, like it's like you can't you can't where, where she wants to base and I'm specifically think I haven't read Armenia Al Sharafi yet. Which that I doesn't know have any more like purely I, fantastic. I don't remember that having nearly as much discussion um, about But I know for, for what she wanted to do with City of Brass, yeah. Like I doubt that there were a lot of white bustles back then. So like it would be it it would be erasure. So okay, twenty five minutes. Starting Hi guys. Two, three, two, one. Bye.
Welcome back, guys. Um, if you were wondering, is the Animorphs TV show as melodramatic as you thought it would be? The answer is yes. <laughs> and you don't want to read anything right now. So rather than uh, putting on a book, I put on the TV show to start watching. And we had a surprise cameo. Well, not cameo, because he's one of the main characters from uh, Sean Ashmore, who plays Bobby Drake in uh, X-Men. <laughs> Iceman. So, how did everyone else do? Um, I managed to unpack my suitcase. I figured I would do that now rather than waiting, like, three weeks. Um, so, I unpacked my suitcase. Please be proud of me. Please clap. Uh, oops, drop that. So, give everyone else a minute. Let me make sure that everyone is linked correctly. That's not it. There we go. Okay. That is odd, but okay. That's weird. And then real quick, since I know I'm going to be sending people there. Let me real quick. Right there she is. Okay. All right, right, right. Okay. And then I'll also pop this. Okay, so if y'all are looking for more sprints, Jess is doing sprints over on her channel. Okay, so you guys can head over there if you need more sprints to do to more to do more reading things. Um, if you're not sprinted out at this point, so I am just a little bit. <laughs> so I will probably, honestly, I'll probably be going to bed. Um, so, anyways, uh, Jess is linked. Jess's sprints are linked down below, as are all of the hosts that have appeared. They are all on. Actually, wait, let me. So this is easier for people for, and so you don't have to go to two different streams. Okay, so no, <laughs> that's not, that is not my friend. Uh, let's try that again. Oh, you can do the stupid thing you do where. Oh, it's going to make me exit out of this before it will let me do this correctly. All right, let's see if this works. And if not, I will do it again. Exit out. Go back in. I love YouTube. Fine. There we go. I don't know who Pretty Boy Fredo is, but his name is definitely not Aoife. So, okay, everyone who had, was on today has been linked down below in the description box. Please go give them a, a holler and say hello. Um, again, you can check out Jess's Sprints if you are looking for more. They are linked over in the chat and they are linked down below in the description box. If you are looking for more content from me, I will be um, doing, there's a video coming out on Monday. I do Monday and Friday videos, and then we will also have sprints on Wednesday. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Saturday are sprints. I will see everyone when I see them. Thank you for hanging out with me, and I'll see you later when we'll talk about more wordy nerdy things. Bye.